Beef and Barnsey Show, brought to you by BowlersMart.com, trusted by bowlers around the world since 2004. By Lightning Strikes Bowl, home of Bowlers Mart Pro Shop. By Platinum Ford, drive the difference. By Fire Lake Bowling Center, 24 state-of-the-art lanes. By True Grit Coatings, drive on our passion. By Roll to Grip, king of them all. By 900 Global, striking worldwide. Good morning and welcome back to the Beef and Barty Show. We did take Thursday off as travel conspiracies conspired to uh, to make mm-hmm. it not possible. And uh, we're happy to be back and uh, happy to see so many of you back already this morning. As usual, I am Barty and I am joined by the unimitable Stuart Williams. Beef Stew, how are you this wonderful morning after your weekend? Um. Not bad. A little tired from a uh, from a nice trip back to Phoenix for a few days. Um, of course, I went to Phoenix just as it became two hours difference, not one. So. <laughs> That's right. Phoenix is one of the two or three places in the country that doesn't change with daylight savings. I was about to say, Phoenix is one of the places that has a brain. <laughs> yeah. Just... Daylight savings is so annoying. <laughs> you whatever this time schedule is. This is the one that we should be on all the time. In my opinion. Whatever this is. I don't know. So, uh, <clears throat> I guess on, Indy on, is, is it one of the other ones. Yeah, there's part. Yeah, parts of Indiana. Yeah. All right. Well, yes. What do you want to talk about, guys? Let us know. Um, Anybody watch um, the All Star weekend? Local tournaments? Masters coming up? Uh, Chris, uh, Chris getting a win, which was probably the worst idea they could have had. <laughs> could, could have milked their couple of second places out of that for a while. Yeah, maybe so, but <laughs> I understand. Yeah, I, I get it. But at the same time, it is nice not having to think about finding a doubles partner for a while in those things. Yeah, well, he's not going to struggle to get one. I don't think for a little while. I guess. Oh, I yeah, I meant you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. I just bowled when he could bowl, and then I just really didn't bowl much any other time. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on the road that was just announced? Um, I've thrown it a little bit. Yeah. It's definitely a different shape because we've had a lot of balls come out recently that were very samey numbers wise yeah. not necessarily like dead the same on the lanes but same same ballpark for the numbers so um just one second i'm sorry uh yeah i uh it, it it's taken my eyes a little bit of time to get used to because it definitely hooks less uh less than um than you know all the other balls because it it hooks in a different spot because we've got a 255 RG, um, an 040 diff. Um, it's been a minute since we've seen one of those. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm I'm intrigued to get it on something that's not the house shot because if I was drawing up a house shot ball, it wouldn't be 255 040. Um, I, I would have been very excited by this ball in a couple of the places we've bowled already this season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this ball might have been pretty useful at the US Open. Yeah. Um, where there was a bit more friction. Um, so that's what I'm excited about. Um, it's it's that it's something different. We haven't really had that in the symmetrical side for a while. So Daniel. Let's get the super chat started. Thanks for the super chat. Best way to combat urethane being thrown during league. Drag the guy outside and beat the shit out of him. <laughs> it also makes it tough for you to finish game three. But, uh, <laughs> but you'd be doing God's work. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> principally for me anyway. Um, when the guys are throwing urethane in league, um, it's actually the hardest time to combat urethane. Um, 
but you've got to find out where the friction is. So you just got to keep um, uh, you just got to keep getting right of it. Um, principally is my advice. Um, yeah, I, th I, I thought I'd have some fans of that one. Um, principally, you just got to get around it. Um, from what I've seen. Uh, yeah, I mean that that is it, it's most time in league they're not blended, so it, it actually ends up almost being uh, a case where you use more ball because <laughs> there, there there's two ways, obviously, and and one of them is getting something quicker that can hook in a shorter time span there is at the back of the pattern, but normally that makes it the wet dry a little worse. So last time you end up using more ball because they're a little tighter down lane than they were. Unless more, more surface, more also I think in league. league. Did you mm -hmm. mention that? Uh no, I guess I was right. I was implying, but I didn't say it. So it's a good point. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I I started reading the uh, reading the comments. <laughs> oh, it looks like we got another issue on Facebook's end. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, it just hmm. popped up. Huh. It says we're having trouble streaming to Facebook. This may be an issue on their end. Okay. Oh, well, I'm not going to worry about that for now. Yeah. So, uh... so yeah, that's, uh, thanks for the super chat. That, that would be our answer. Um, try and get a little more, uh, get the ball a little further right. And you could do that while using a little more surface, I think that that's going to be your best bet to try and hook around. Yeah. Uh, Travis and so either of us will be bowling in April in Houston? Nope. Nope. Uh, Adam, congrats. Finishing second to Cooley. Uh, Very good. Had you bowled the skills challenge, you would not have finished second to him, even if oh. you didn't have any tricks. Hello. I must say to Cooley that the one thing he did achieve, nobody else who did the trick shot challenge could have done. There is no chance any of the others could have done that. What he did. That was very difficult. What did he do? He he held the ball on the two fingers and then Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's Smashed the one thing he did do. Yeah, that's... And he didn't get enough credit for that. No. That was... Way harder than Tommy's fucking pool stick nonsense. Yeah, yeah. Like, way harder. But the thing is, is all of those trick shots are like, some of them are really difficult and some of them are really easy. Like, people go nuts about that pool ball thing that Parker Bones set up. It's the easiest thing on, the hardest thing is setting it up. Yeah, it just you takes You can't a miss. Yeah, it, it's fairly dummy proof. It is when you're doing an exhibition and you're doing several trick shots, you kind of need to have a couple that you know are going to work because some of them are pretty hard. And uh, yeah, that's one that visually looks kind of cool, got a lot of things going on. But really, if you set it up right, it's 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 fairly fairly easy to pull off. So, um, uh, but yeah, that's. In principally, that's what I've seen. Like with those trick shots, it's kind of like it, it's a bit stale, and they didn't necessarily have the. Hey, Adam, they didn't necessarily have the guys who were the best at doing it uh, there. No, um, I think that's probably a that's a combination thing. One, the companies needed to pick better guys, but I'm not sure the companies knew what they were picking guys well, for. How it was all going to work? I mean. I think it was kind of comical that they that Rash could have basically stopped after he did one and he would have won, and then they contrived to make it a draw because he took too many attempts. Yeah, well, a little bit of that's on him too. He he started out fantastic in his interview. He buttered up the judges, the whole thing. Kimberly gave him the layup. Are you you know are you trying to sway the judges? And LZ had to say a hundred percent. Yeah, and yeah. It would have been a great interview. Instead, he went, Well, one of them doesn't talk to me. One of them did this. One of them, and he conspired to make it kind of awkward. 
Now, in hindsight, it it worked out perfect because yeah, they got the slow mo flying eagle hit. Yeah, and he got he got to get a shot in on Tommy because he made about five trick shots and Tommy made two, and then somehow they still tied, and and then they got the real they they got the highlight out of the whole. I mean, that basically made the rest of it. You forgot about the rest of it, basically. Yeah. And so, oh, I didn't. All I could think of watching it was, we could have been bowling the tournament. Well, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, and then you got, uh, well, you did get grumpy PDW. He looked very, very pleased to be on the oh, set. Oh, God. That was. I mean, talk about guy, man yelling at clouds. Yeah, um, I mean. There was just there's there's so much to break down from it, but there wasn't, <laughs> there wasn't necessarily that much of it. There was the weekend was positive, so um hey Dan, thanks for the super chat. I'm oh, usually yeah. great at spares, but now I'm in a slump missing anything. Any tips on how to get back in the groove groove? I do throw it straight at spares. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, so there's the Dom and Stu way of going at this, which I can appreciate isn't necessarily everybody's, which is to throw the current spare ball down the road and drill a fresh one. Um, <laughs> I can appreciate that that's not necessarily in everybody's uh, ideal solution. And before anybody says it, I would happily buy spare balls um, if I was messing with them. But anyway... Um, usually when I start to get in a, uh, a slump with spares, it's two things combined. I think that spares is a hundred percent a mental thing. And once you start thinking about missing them, you're a hundred percent going to keep missing them. Once that negativity crops in, it's like when the pin setting comes down and you're like, oh man, that's six pins off spot. This is going to make, I'm going to make sure I hit both pins with the ball now. Otherwise, I'm going to chop this. And then you take the 10 straight back because you overcorrect. Like your brain just gets in the way. So trying to go through a routine where you keep your mind focused on not missing, which I know sounds ridiculous, but sometimes you can just stand there and count in your head um, just to occupy your brain a little bit. Um <clears throat> And then the second thing that it could be is that your swing has got out of straight. Um, and if you've had a really straight swing, usually spares are very easy. But if your swing starts getting a little bit out of line and you're used to having a straight swing, then it can become quite challenging. So yeah. for me, I would take a video from behind. And if you've got a video from behind the you know, you're previously bowling and you can see like your swing is maybe going behind your back a little bit more than it used to. That, that can be, um, that, that can be an issue also. Yeah. Make sure your footwork's straight and then, uh, quiet down, quiet down your upper body. So both this way and that way. So. And, and, and this part of your upper body too. Yeah, oh, yeah, keeping your head still is kind of the that's the oh. cheat code to getting all of it. But I, yeah, I was about to say no. I just meant keeping the bit inside still. Well, that's that because I'm telling you, for me, once you miss a couple, like when I missed a couple, because I don't really miss them very often. Once I missed a couple in uh, Wichita, mm -hmm. it was like those things were moving. This is really bothering me. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, it was like the pins were moving. Yeah. And then you start trying to correct and then you get, it, it, it can really get, it can get messy. It can uh, get messy. Oh, sorry. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry. I missed it. <laughs> uh, like the review of the new optimal idol. Appreciate that. I mean, Stu probably shot 300 again because it's what he does in every yeah. bar review right now. Uh, I'm done buying for this season, but where in the bag would it fit? Benchmark, I would say on the stronger end of benchmark. Uh, and then once it gets a little bit lane shine, actually, that's kind of that. That's 
I'd say right where it fits. It seemed I I've seen a lot of them in bags already. Uh, and and they kind of fit in that. If you like the original idol, I'm guessing because I didn't have an original idol, but up against a phase two and that kind of thing, it uh, it fits in that slot pretty nicely. And uh, so I think that's, you know, for me, the phase twos have always been good, but not not great. <laughs> as great for me as they have been a lot of the people. So uh, uh, it's kind of fitting in that same slot, though, where I'm going to use the, the idol instead of the phase two. Yeah, for me, the phase two is a little cleaner. Um, okay. The idol's a little earlier. Uh, but that's kind of how it's always been. Um, okay. Um, I personally, with the idols, I think that I've, well, for me anyway, the one I've liked the most is the one I drilled the weakest. Um, I drilled it a little, like, a quarter of an inch weaker than the ones, than the idols that I liked. And it kind of gave me more of the, re um, um, yeah, more of the reaction I was looking for, should we say. Um, I felt like it made it, drilling it that little bit weaker made it continue a little bit better than the ones that I'd had before. And they made them a little bit more, you know, it's in play all the time now when I've been bowling at home. Like I can kind of slow the speed or speed up or, you know, like I say, it's been good on the house shot as well, which has kind of surprised me a little bit. Because for me, the phase two has always been a bit meh on the house shot. For me personally, mm -hmm. it's definitely the, um, yeah, it's just a little, it's not quite early enough, but it's not quite angular enough, if that makes sense. Uh, the, the phase yeah. two. So. Yeah. Adam. Um, thanks, Adam. It was emotional. Um, do you think the harsh reality is a good compliment to the optimum idol in my tournament bag? I mean, yeah, it could be, but like, to be honest, Adam, like if you've got a phase two and you've got a harsh reality, I mean, you've got a lot of bases covered. Um, you could add an optimum idol instead of the phase two, but I mean, for me on the left side, I think you're going to be using more asymmetrical balls anyway. I don't think that you necessarily are going to need lots of symmetrical balls. So that's my two pennies on that one. Yeah. I, or you can add a touch of surface. Yeah. Tournaments are better than pre tape trick shots. I think there is a place for an entertainment thing as a standalone. And, and I, for one, enjoyed seeing uh, Tommy miss the flying eagle over and over and over again. Did you enjoy that? <laughs> I, I knew that was coming. I got a FaceTime from him and uh, he, he didn't know how to set it up. So I gave him some, some advice on how to set it up. And then when I saw him throwing at four miles an hour at it and I was watching it with Linda, I'm like, well, if he ever does hit it right, one, I don't know that it's going to fly across the thicker gutter cap because ideally that's not the one you want to go across. And two, I think it's going to go in the left gutter after he hits it because yeah. you, you. But I mean, if they threw it any faster on that lady, it would look. Right. And I, I mean, I get why it was, and he wasn't loose and they had nowhere to warm up and all that. But I'm watching like, ooh, and that's 15 on top of it. It's going to just ping pong off that thing when it's circling around it. And I'm like, and then he finally made it, and I, no chance. Yeah, I can't believe. It. And then, and then when he, then when he, uh, his go in the roll off, he was probably about a sixteenth of an inch off having exactly the same result as Rash. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it, I mean it's by far the hardest trick to make. And when you're going across the proper pair like that, that thick gutter cap is not. It, it's no bargain trying to get it because you kind of have to skip it off of it. Yeah, I mean. To me, the best trick shot artist I've ever seen for doing things that I'm like, I couldn't do that is Brian Voss, and it's not yeah. even remotely close. Voss um, is really good too. Brett 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 Angelo's pretty good at a few things that I've seen. Like he he, he was pretty good with the two balls. Yeah. Like I I thought Rash did a good job with the two balls. I I thought Rash was surprisingly I I, I was I was surprised. I didn't think he had that much in his repertoire. 
Uh, I don't even know if he was part of the trick shots the first time around much, but, uh, but yeah, he was, he was by far had the most, the most uh, uh, in his bag to throw at him. Now he threw a million of them. <laughs> For a guy with a bad back, a couple of those wouldn't have been on my radar. The, the throwing it between your legs thing is no, that's uh I was kind of surprised that Cooley didn't do that, to be honest, because I think I've seen him do it. that before. Yeah. Um, it, that's a pretty easy one for me with no follow through. Learn has a couple of those where they're up and back and through the legs. And then the one that Tommy did learns it. He's fantastic at that. Yeah. Ross making the, the five pin on, on two lanes at the same time with one in each hand is off the charts. Good. Well, I've got a funny story about that. And this, this a hundred percent happened because Ross did that, you know, like the five pin uh-huh. and my mate goes, Big deal. That's the five pin, right? Voss goes, okay. He set up the left-handed baby split on the left lane and the left-handed baby split on the right lane and said, how'd you like them apples and sped both? Two, seven, and three, ten? Like this? Two, seven, and three, ten. And sped them both. And I was like, oh, my God. And then the other one he does, which is absolutely insane, is when he goes at the two, eight with two balls. That was the one I was going to say, too. And it- and he gets the left-handed one there quicker, which is insanely hard to do. Mm-hmm. And he chops the two off the front, and then the left, and then the right ball takes the eight pin. Voss is insane. Like he that, is so good at that stuff with the two balls. That kind of control over two things at the same time is off. You know, I mean, the whole thing, you know, where you're rubbing and doing this, and yeah. most people can't do that. And then you start going. To be able to control two speeds, two rotations, nice. and direction at the same time, I can't even tell you. There's every once in a while you just watch one, like Oscar when he threw it over the, the tall chair and then actually made it, like the ball struck and hit the eight pin. And oh, he, yeah. Everybody else just went, yeah, this, one, this is, all right. Yeah. Sorry, we've got one super chat. We've got one question we've got to get to. Uh, um I, I've, I've got a friend who needs some help. <laughs> well, sir, could you <laughs> give me some of your specs? Um, I, yeah. You know, how do you, how do you throw it? With ball speed, rotation. <laughs> um, oh, and, and if you would, could you tell me all 32 variations of them? <laughs> I, I have it all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I, I'm uh, Simo. I'm on. Uh, I'm on Team DNA Coil. I. Uh, I. I think you'll probably hate that one, but I like that one. And uh, yeah, I think. I think. Uh, I think you're already on Team Idol. So. Um, yeah, I, I. I foresee a purple ball going down the lane in your future. Uh, yeah. By the way, I, I owe you a, a little bit of thanks. Uh, uh, <laughs> we had a decent weekend with Boy Wonder, and he was in on the uh, on the Cosmos, the Anthony Simon Cosmos plan. Fair, fair. <laughs> Two thousand last missed check, and so uh, so we we gonna really. I mean, you might as well just throw away all the rest of them. It only takes two. It's only two two holes anyway to drill those things and get them done. Yeah. So, well, you know what? We're coming in. It, it it's a hundred thousand, but first, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be. Uh, well, a little more relaxed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be fair, he had he would have had to win all four of them to get there. You go, yeah. You are a hundred percent the reason why he throws the cosmos up twelve at at twenty four miles an hour. And but, and, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so now the, board, the boredom of the tour is now over for Anthony. We have uh, made yes, it. yeah. That we'll have another show on Thursday. We'll probably talk the same bullshit that we're talking today. Um, yeah, do we do we need to come with an arsenal like pre-planned out the the Simo arsenal? Well, it's also dangerous this week. We have one less ball rep. I mean, I mean, oh, there we go. Look, put me on. Oh, oh, right, Simo. There we yeah. go. Simo, he's in. Simo's also going to be dangerous in Vegas because he not only has the PBA trucks to drill from, but he also has access to the warehouse. <laughs> And no ball limits at the Masters, so no 10 no limit. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
Yeah. There's a few people at the Masters, you know, when the brackets come out, you know, I mean, back when I made them, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and no, uh, no August 2022 date. So we could have both idols in play this week. So Simon's coming on on Thursday. There we go. We got that sorted out. Um, good morning. Well, good morning to you too. Says my main problem today is that I passed the ball too far away from my feet. Uh, what is the best train drill I could do to fix that? Thanks. Um, so I think you're saying that you are, are you saying that you push it away too far, or that it's too far away from your foot when you let go of it? Um, I know you oh, said this yeah. chat a couple of minutes ago, but if you can confirm with me what you're talking about, are you talking about your push away? Or are you talking about when you come through um, at delivery? I'm assuming at delivery. At release. Okay. There you go. Um, I mean, that's very much a, a footwork thing. I assume What do, one of the hallmarks of basically all pros is that their pivot step, the last step they take before they slide, and that slide step are basically on the same board or very, very close. And so if you are – sliding into away from if your feet are going back and forth your swing will then move away from your body a lot more that that is at least one of the things that can really contribute particularly if you slide and you slide way to the right now your body is facing way right of target so the only way to get it online is then this shoulder has to come way around to get it back online which then pushes it away from your foot it seems like when you slide right, your ball would be closer, but it actually works the opposite way for you to get to not throw it right in the gutter. That's at least one of the one of the things that can contribute to it. Stu may have a different idea. Yeah, I think that like however it happens when the ball gets behind you back a lot, I see that that happens a lot for guys. Um, what Chris is talking about is probably the fix. Um, in my mind, some of the things that I try to focus on to stop that generally the people who have that is they don't feel like they're doing it but they push the ball away to the right like and mm -hmm. that brings it on a swing behind their back and then if they're not in like absolutely perfect time there like chris is talking about their arm tends to roll around it and then you get like you know you're in this position where you separate it a lot so Focus on the push away. Make it seem like you're pushing left a little bit. Um, can can like try and straighten your swing up a little bit. But like I say, that's for me as a bowler. Um, Mark as a coach would probably say, yeah, what you're trying to do is way too difficult, Stu. <laughs> if he tells him to move his, like, his right foot over here, then that won't happen ever again. And I'll be like, oh, okay, cool. Do that then. <laughs> So that that's principally the thing to me. It's like Chris talking about folks on your footwork, trying to get that last step um, to be right in front of the previous one. And then just have a look at where your push away is. And if you're feeling like you're, if it looks like you're really pushing it away to the right, basically, if you push away to the right, the ball will come straight back. So if you push it straight forward, it will come straight back. If you push it out to the right, it can only go behind your back. It, it's just mm -hmm. impossible for it not to. So there are a couple of things that we tend to uh, focus on. But like I say, mine is more of a feel thing because I'm trying to sort it out as a bowler. Chris's is more of a like a coach's thing. So that's kind of <laughs> where it's at. If you still have troubles with it, um, like I say, send Baker a video and go that route. He shows you all the things that uh, that will help him out, uh, help you out to make the right. right videos for him to help you. So, do you expect your thing to be in play for the Masters? Your buddy Brian asked a version of the same question. Uh, I, I mean, really, it's who knows the idea that we have to hide patterns. And so people have to fly across the country and, and pretend that people who are driving don't have a big advantage when that happens is a little silly, but they seem to think it's necessary. So um, 
I have a theory, and I might be totally wrong, but I have a theory that the lane guy likes it when he gets good feedback, and a lot of guys gave good feedback of last year of, oh, this is bowling. Everybody was, I think the ball companies were happy because everybody was using like high performance balls and all of the rest of it. So I think that we're going to find a variation of what we bowled on last year. The longer slick pattern. I the think a lot pattern. of people will bring balls for that. And if he does something closer to the traditional, you know, what it was for a long time, which is 39 feet and not a lot of volume, it'll go back to being a lot of urethane. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll see. So, um, yeah, but, but nobody knows because we don't really see uh, do you guys see a lot of the spare combos in PBA events? They show percentage, but it would have been nice to know how many of each spare is left by the pros. Ironically enough, you can find that. Um, it's kind of difficult, though. They don't do a very – I've had this conversation with the lane talk guys quite a bit over – Okay. Like, it's not, that, it's not very easy to find a lot. Of it's not easy to, to – Personally, I thought that that spare thing could have been a lot of fun, and it was terrible. Like, personally, like the ones they picked, like, to me, having watched some of those things, like, two, three, eight, nine, that's that's one that nobody sees. Like. Yeah, that used to be one of my trick shot specialties. Yeah, but that's, but that's one of those ones that's like, if you nail it, you get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then the guys left the four or five and hooked at it. And I was like, what? Like, whoa. <laughs> I'm like, mm. so that was, I, I think it would have been kind of entertaining to see some of the guys. Um, Cause I don't think any of the guys who were on that, like Darren's a pretty good spare shooter, but I, I, yeah. I don't think that the guys who were on that, this isn't to besmirch them, but people don't go, Oh my God, they are the spare shoes. Like it wasn't like they had Frankie on. And yeah. like Frankie comes up with like, he goes, he said to me the one time, he goes, that's not usually the way I spare the four, five, seven, but the pins weren't in the right spot for the way I'd normally spare it. Okay, you leave it so often that you have different ways to shoot it. That's cute. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and if they were going to go the route they went, I would have thought that stuff like the three, four, uh, you know, the three, four, six, seven, ten is something that we leave like quite often. And there's a couple yeah. of different strategies for going at that. Like it seems more and more guys are throwing the straight ball at it. Whereas nobody used to throw straight at that. No. Um, so I think that that one could have been a bit more fun. I was a little disappointed that we didn't get the uh, ode to stew that we didn't get the one, three, six, eight from to go at. <laughs> um, ben so Buck, how are you? Thanks for watching. <laughs> Look forward uh, to seeing it in a few weeks. That that was just a few of the ones that I I, I think I would have liked to have seen. Um, uh, yeah, my psychologist. Yeah. So. This is a safe space, Linda. <laughs> uh, discontinuing the reality was a big flop. Changed my mind. Don't have enough data to know one way or the other. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, I don't. This is one of those things. It's a bit like I liken it to the red zone. We just don't have enough data to know whether that decision is right or wrong. Yeah. I mean, sales ends up dictating everything. So, ultimately, But that's what I'm saying. Like, they don't, they don't discontinue balls just because they want to do it no. to piss you guys off. Good morning, Dalton. See you at league tonight. <laughs> uh, go on to Facebook and Emily Frazier and feel free to ask her as much as you'd like. Maybe you'll get an answer because we haven't in three years. So um, let's see. Sorry, I got quite a ways behind, so I'm trying to catch back up here. Um, yeah, we're bowling at Thunderbolt. Yeah. Nice to see you. If you're wearing a Beef and Bonzi shirt, we'll definitely see you. We will. Uh, I'll be rolling with Ryan in the doubles. You'll be rolling with Frankie, right? Yeah. 
EJ smoked that 410. Oh, yeah, he absolutely did. Oh, holy cow, he, he blistered that thing. <laughs> I didn't think that got that got enough uh, uh, Randy enthusiasm. Randy's normally, and, and he was enthusiastic, but like, wow, we sat there like, holy cow. It's... Yeah, he, he nailed it. <laughs> Max speed. So, uh, Where are we at? Yeah, five, seven, ten spare. Well, I've never seen it made. So, other than in the trick shots and the guys throwing, some guys got to where they threw a little six pound ball at it. If you can slide one of them, you can make it. I I do have to uh, give out a uh, thanks, Nunny. Shout out to uh, Cooley. I defended him on the uh, the two finger thing because that was very impressive, but. He might have had the worst attempts of all time at throwing two balls. And the guys could have helped him out a little bit. Because if you see the guys who do that quite often, they're throwing at the 6'10. The, the 6'10 and the 4'7, they ain't throwing at the 7'10. Rash was already way ahead on that one. Because everybody thinks, oh, the big four. They don't think anything of it. But the big four is way easier to spare than the than the uh, seven ten because you've got a much bigger target on both sides. Yeah, I think I, that it, I think that's so. what uh, that, that's what Norm was talking about with the seven ten too. The two seven is actually easier to make than the or the three ten was easier to make than the uh, the than the ten ten by itself. I think is what he was. Was it him? There was. I heard Norm in the background of one of them when right. Tommy just missed. He's like, actually, get a bigger target. Uh, Oh, game. well, look who's here. He threw a strike or two on Sunday. Yeah, you both, uh, you, you guys both um, killed it on Saturday, right? You had like the second or third highest scores or something like that. Yeah, one of us got a little more than the other one, but. Yeah, that, that would be you, right? Oh, oh, was it? Was it? Was I, it I, I don't really keep track of that that much. The team scores whatever really matters to me. <laughs> Yeah. And so we were leading by 150. But uh, <laughs> you know, as you mention it, though, I, I I do think you were right. I think maybe I, he did spot me a hundred the first two. So what <laughs> <laughs> uh, to think of it? Yes, yes, that was me. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh my God, was so childish, but it's but we. <laughs> At both trials, and Barnes missed a six ten and kicked my bag. But I wasn't bowling trials. Why would I be bowling trials? Oh, team! Oh, team! USA trials. I kicked your bag. Most of the time, I try and keep that to mind. It must have looked like. But yeah, we. I, I can hug that out. I'm. Uh, I, I've matured into my twenties now, so I can. Uh, I'm happy to do that. Dio Bernard apparently brings a six pounder drill for himself. Or something. <laughs> I don't know about that light, but you no, know, apparently he, he's he's he, uh, he's he, turning into a, a and he he covered himself nicely in glory on that TV show, first TV show, and he he made them look like they were pretty pretty simple. Uh, yeah, it was the uh, he did have it. He doesn't bring it now, but it was for shooting the um, the three seven. And the uh, six eight. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Can't be left-handed logic. I'm telling you. Oh yeah, yeah. He's he was going through the old closet uh, while I was on spring break last week. So uh, the OG Badger, fifteen pounds, two five seven oh forty. That one had a 300 last week. I thought the OG Badger was gold. Oh, is yeah. that Honey Badger? Is that the Honey Badger, yeah. The OG was a dark blue pearl. And then the gold one came out after that. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. I thought they had Honey Badgers and then Badgers were symmetrical. The Badgers were symmetrical. The Honey Badger, actually, I think, had a yeah. race. I, I, I thought the Honey Badger was the first one, but okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Somebody says, who is the best sidekick for Randy right now? Dave, Ryan, Lamont, Fanta, Jakubowski. Uh, nobody beats Stone, of course. Um, Dave Lamont. 
Yeah. I Dave. like Dave, but I also think that it's time that they mix it up and they have a three person booth. Um, I think that if you do that, I think that it allows, yeah, <laughs> it allows, it allows Randy to focus more on the entertainment. It allows the, the, the color guy to not speak as much, which I think would be good. And I think it allows them to get somebody in, whether that be Chris or Norm or whoever. Um, yeah, I mean, Belmo's done a nice job. I think you'd be good in there. I think there's a lot of guys that can bring the technical, the, you know, talk to their, our core audience, which is bowling people, like the people here. You know, this is our core I, group. I, so. Yeah, I, I, I'm a little bit like, I feel like they always use that as almost like a derogatory. But I think the problem is, is I think new viewers want to understand that too. Yeah. Like, if I yeah. watch baseball, I'm not a big baseball guy, but if I watch baseball... I really like it when like John Smoltz is in the is in the booth and he's explaining like what the pitch is trying to do to set this guy up, you know, for the swing yeah. and the miss. Like it's like, why is it when it's a 3 0 pitch, they like oh sorry, like a 0 2 pitch, they throw it in the dirt. Why wouldn't they just try and get the third strike? Like things yeah. like that. Cause when you watch, you're like just like what that why is he terrible. why, why would he do it? Yeah. <laughs> So that part of it to me is kind of interesting. And I feel like more viewers are into that who don't even necessarily like, they think that the technical talk is only for the bowlers. And I just don't think that's correct. I think there are a lot of people who watch, who want to understand what's going on. Yeah. You just, you have to start explaining instead of just going the lowest common denominator, which certainly when I started doing broadcasting, that's, that's all they wanted you to talk to that person. And that's mostly because the producer that's in the truck doesn't understand bowling. And so they want to be able to understand it. If they don't understand what you're talking about, then they don't want to they don't want to hear it. But they yeah. immediately say, Well, the audience doesn't understand what you're talking about. No, you don't understand, and you don't care to understand. And that's what Dave Lamont's good at because Dave Lamont actually understands bowling. Um, whereas Fanta clearly does not. Right. Um yeah, Lamont has some background, but he's not so advanced that if we go off on something, he goes, hey, okay, now I don't understand what you're talking about. Explain that. Yeah. And he walks you back in. And I think Dave's a great balance, Lamont, that is, uh, because he, Ray and him also get along. They have a little better synergy. Not as good as Stone. I mean, Rob's one of the all-time – I mean, he's, he's turning into a superstar in that field. And so – we're just not going to be able to get him very much. He's going to be off doing bigger things. Tell him, Claren, uh, I'll good morning, and then I'll go back to that. But uh, yeah, and he bowled yeah, good. He finished second this weekend, bowling with Mo Heston. And uh, congratulations, Mo. He's on the good side of uh, recovering from from cancer, and uh, won his first tournaments, and he bowled both days, and he pulled really good. Uh, so, Ty Tyler a throws a couple of messages, right? He he did move a few pins around over the weekend. He Didn't has have a problem throwing a lot of doubles. Uh, he is uh, one of the ugliest people to watch bowl. Like his arms and legs are going in every direction, and motherfucker, does that ball hit the pins off? Yeah, you really watch, and 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 if you if you don't get distracted by by the approach, there's a lot of shots that end up. That's what I'm saying. Like he he makes a lot of shots on line. A lot. Yeah. He wasn't afraid to throw to, to – he was – yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I would love it if uh, Tyler would send Baker a video and go, um, I'm just feeling a little off. Any thoughts? Because <laughs> that's the one where you get the video and you're like – Yeah. I, to be fair, though, I mean, like uh, Lavery, Anthony Lavery, the first time, uh -huh. He didn't really. He's always been scared of coaching because he knows he's outside the, you know, the traditional window. Yeah, he basically looks like a two-hander, but he throws it with this. You know, he throws it one-handed, and so he doesn't ever want to talk to anybody because they always want to try and change. And so he's terrified of of going to Baker. And Baker's like, "Man, you do a ton of things right." And Anthony's like, "Oh, I thought you were going to try and change everything. Goes, <laughs> you strike as much as anybody on the planet." <laughs> uh, but. We'll do a little bit of – we'll change a little this and this, and then I'll make you a little bit more accurate to go along with all that power. And they're like, 
and he went on a pretty good run. Um, All right, H. Uh, regular contributor. He says, piggybacking off the ball close to the ankle question. I feel like this is all getting at me because I beat the shit out of my ankle this weekend. <laughs> we, I can't remember the last time we had a question about, about ball passing the ankle. Now we have two because you just And I'm telling you, I, I, I bowled this weekend. We'll get to your question in just one second. <clears throat> and I was using two old balls that I drilled. Ironically, Victory Road Solid, um, which was what I won my first title with. And I dropped it from the top of my swing, throwing hard at the 4.7.10. And it basically, from the top of my swing, it went directly into the approach, into my ankle, into the gutter. So, um, yeah, it was one of the most painful things. Uh, it was in the gutter just after the arrows, uh, the right gutter, that is. And I believe that they're still picking up pieces of my skin off the uh, off the lane. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm walking with a limp right now. Um, it was not it was not fun. Um, I don't recommend it as an option. But uh, anyway, piggybacking off the ball close to the answer. My ball is perfectly behind my head at the pivot step, but at the last second, my arm goes out. Any tips or feels to keep that uh, in line at the bottom? Um, I suspect, with the way you're talking about it, that this is because of Chris's favorite, the shoulder rotates too early. Mm -hmm. Would you say that that is, uh, I might be correct in that one? I think, I think you were 100% on. It's a life I'm living on a pretty regular basis uh, right now. That Mine's involved a lot with my right leg not being as good as I want it to be all the time. And so my shoulder started to take over for that. And it's moved my, my swing to where it was brushing the pant leg at the best of my days to pretty routinely probably three inches, four inches further away than it used to be. And that's kind of, it's settled there, but that's a lot of that. There's just a lot more movement now than there used to be when I watch when I go and watch video and the more you can use your legs and the less you use that shoulder to create power, uh, the more that will stay in line. So, yeah, that's like I say, we, we talk about that a lot. Um, just trying to keep that shoulder back as you're coming through. It's basically just a different way of thinking about waiting on the ball. Would you say that's the, like, yeah, that, back that's in the day. The that people, used to kind of yeah to trigger it the right way people would say oh you need to wait on it and all it really is 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 like not getting like super forward with you with your head and not like leading with your shoulder True. you True. try and lead a little bit more with your left shoulder almost um you're not going to get there but if you visualize ej tackett ej tackett's <laughs> left shoulder is wet and like kyle sherman's the same um, they almost bowl like two handers, and I'm not talking about their rev rate. I'm talking about how side on they are. Whereas somebody like me and Chris, because we're more like traditional slash old, um, we're way more like chest facing the pins. Whereas if you watch EJ, EJ's chest is almost facing the guy on the next lane um, when he bowls. So it's just about keeping that shoulder back. That's why EJ never has this issue. Because he can't rotate your shot. Like, he'd almost fall over. Um, so, I bet Ryan doesn't have much trouble with his shoulder rotating forward early. A little, because there is rotation in there. But uh, uh, he would he didn't struggle a lot. To, he, he's throwing it all right right now. He's feeling it a little bit. Yeah. And so, uh, he, you know, we didn't really talk about the collegiate thing. But he did win the singles uh, portion of the sectionals and their team one. So he's going to get to bowl uh, the individual national finals this year for the first time. Uh, the team format might be the best, maybe the boringest, but the best format to get the best teams. There were 64 Baker games. The singles part is like an afterthought. Uh, it's six games sprint with 180 people bowling. It's impossible to get through. And lot, very often like Brandon Bone just missed. Uh, CJ Petron and Spencer were both just out. 
you have basically the whole first team all America didn't didn't make it this year out of uh, out of a couple of different regions. So and Ryan uh, Ladd and looked at those guys and went, sucks to suck, bitches. Because <laughs> he was he was quite a bit ahead, right? He ended up that way, yeah. His bad games were two twenties, and he was able to take the the funky pairs and and uh, he got score out of them instead of one ninety or two zero, and uh, that's where he really ran away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the one thing that I know Simon will never be is broke, because he'll just find a way to make more money. He, and, and he's it, well, he's just not afraid to work. He, he's just a more talented – like when I room with Brian Smith, he always knew he was going to be fine because it, now he owns a bowling center and he, he'll work 80 hours a week. He doesn't care. He'll 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 do construction on houses. He just – some guys just don't – they don't mind putting in the time. And Simo is a guy that doesn't mind. Well, he goes in the classic and does the orders just because he can't sleep. <laughs> guys show up to work the next morning like, oh, all right, we're ready to ship. There we go. <laughs> um, that oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Says, my sympathy, Stu. I absolutely clobbered my ankle the other day in practice during wow. a foul line drill. My ankle was sore for days. I mean, at least yours wasn't. I I I took three three uh, four full steps to smash mine in there. <laughs> I the thing that was funny was I started throwing it a little straighter. Uh, I had to the last couple of games because the lanes have got a bit messed up. I was petrified of clipping it, though. I mean, petrified because it hurts so bad. And I'm like, I said to because I was bowling with Brett Wolf. It was kind of fun. I got to bowl with Brett in the doubles. It's nice. It's been a minute, huh? Yeah, yeah. And uh, I said to Brett, I go, if I hit my ankle again, I am going to puke on the approach. It is going to hurt so bad. <sighs> And Brett was just like laughing because he was just, we've all been there. Like, yeah. but if you can oh rush my. it, you can get through the next one when you really hit it. Terrified. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so it felt like I was like taking my swing. And as it came through, I was going, <laughs> like literally moving my hand away <laughs> to throw it from my hip. <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> Not doing that. Ew. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, yeah. It depends what you want to get out of it. Because to me, um, I think you're going to get more feedback from the thing with Baker. But I think that the in-person thing allows you to see the specto data and all the rest of it, which I think for some people can be eye-opening. For me personally, I couldn't give two shits about what specto says. My eyes are adjusted to what my misses are. And I know when I'm bowling well, based on where it is, I don't really need the specto data to tell me, oh man, you're really throwing every shot good. But there, for some people, the specto data is really eye opening. Right. Um, and I think you'll also realize that after a while, um, what you perceive to be a massive miss is two boards. <laughs> like, it just messes with everybody. Everybody's like, oh my God, I've got five boards to hit down lane. You really don't. It looks like you might do, but you really don't. Yeah. Um, so that that that's my take on it, my polite take on it. Yeah, I, I'm a I'm a Baker lesson guy. So uh but it it is easier to try the things that they're talking about in person and get instant feedback. I, I get the bonuses of it. Um, you know, depending on who's there at the ITRC to give you the lessons. And, and it's a it's a package experience there. Uh, although now Baker with his own training center has access to more of the same same data. Obviously, you don't get that when you do a video lesson versus when you show up there. So, um, but yeah, I, that's kind of, I'd probably lean towards it. It's cheaper. It's cheaper than the uh, in person down there at the beginning, but uh, uh, you know. But you if do you live like interaction. within driving distance, ITRC, right? It, it would make some sense for sure. I I, I'm just it. saying that right. the main benefits I see of the ITRC are mm -hmm. because I think they have something similar to Strike Seeker, right, where you can mm -hmm. see like replays of your shots. And well, that. they have Strike Seeker also. Yeah, and I think that that product's excellent. I really. Mm -hmm. like 
there there are very few products that i go oh my god that's really cool like these days because i think everything's kind of been tried um mm -hmm. i think that that one is really cool like for me i find a lot of value in that being able to see the shot being able to see a couple of different angles um right. i i i like well, that well down to the the essential information versus some of the specto has a lot of things that are kind of cool to look at but they're not necessarily for me, I was super disappointed by Spectre when I got to it. I was 100% all in on Spectre when it came out and the idea of it. And I was like, oh my God, there's just endless possibilities. Like I could see the difference between like a pin down ball and a pin up ball. I could, you know, like how much, how much does it really change if I hit this ball with like 2000 as opposed to the shiny ball? And I looked at the data and it was like, the things that I wanted to be consistent are so wildly inconsistent, like reading from it. That And it was, and it might have got an upgrade from when I was at the plant doing it, but I was like, man, I could be here all day messing around with things, trying to understand yeah. what difference it make. But it never really, for me, it never really was consistent enough, like with breakpoint distance and stuff, because it's just yeah. so hard to measure that. True. True. Uh, Dave Lamont, except when he's in some calling a 24810, the impossible dream, trying too hard to coin his own hammer. If you remember, Stone took lots of flack over the hand bone thing at the beginning. And now it's just a thing. But at the beginning, every non bowler's like, oh, what's this clown doing? He's being a goofball. That thing, that's dumb. Blah, 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 blah. And now, now it's just a thing. I mean, Dave said it so many times, I've never even heard him say it. So, yeah. Nick said, yeah, uh, Couch was doing it too. And I think you could do the same thing. And whether you bring in a, a third uh, kind of permanently or you bring in, you cycle in. Uh, Belmo has been really good in the booth when he's when he's done it. Uh, like I said, Dom would be good. You obviously bring great color to uh, – to a yeah. telecast and maybe an occasional i just think I, I i think the problem is though is is like for as much as people want like would like that i think that from my point of view anyway there is a certain like entry fee so to speak to be in that person so like them putting packy in there would be ridiculous not that packy wouldn't necessarily bring value to it it's just that if you look at all the other sports that they have someone in They've got like a person who's like it'd be a Tommy, Sean, Drew. yeah, Bill, Bill O'Neill, maybe, yeah, uh, some Simon. Having said maybe. that, the guy who's just who's taking over on the golf, um, is it Smiley Kaufman who's doing it? He has like almost no resume in comparison to the guys who have done it before, and he's great. Yeah, and so, some guys just have have yeah. a personality that overrides, and they have enough time in the locker room that it works who was it? one of the golfers that was super critical um but you go back and, and obviously he had he had plenty of chops uh that played in the nicholas days uh, uh i'm blanking on the name now Faldo. well Faldo was uh i was thinking there was somebody like azinger or somebody who was a little bit yeah stetch and that's where you get to that little funny spot where wow he's pretty critical of some guys that he couldn't beat <laughs> And and so you lose that kind of uh uh yeah, I mean I think the thing Johnny is, Johnny Miller was super critical, but he was the best player in his era for a while. A hundred percent. And that's a little bit where Roma runs into trouble a little bit, like when he's sort of saying, I wouldn't have done it that way, yeah, but you didn't win shit. <laughs> yeah. And that's not to say he wasn't right, it's just a little hard sometimes, whereas when um um, who's, uh, who's if Montana says that you go, yeah, he gets a pass. Yeah. He, he gets to say what he wants to say. Brady, whatever, you know, the guys. Are... Exactly. Well, I also feel like sometimes those guys who've been there, like, like Peyton Manning dances around like a motherfucker about criticizing people. Yeah. And he was a guy who got hammered. Yeah. Even though he was. Uh, and that, and that's arguably very one of the better quarterbacks of certainly of the generation, if not all time. Oh, a hundred percent. And it, sure. but it's just funny. Like he's like a hundred percent able to criticize the guy, but he's just like, 
Uh, that isn't really the way I'd have gone about doing that. I mean, I can see what he was thinking. I just wouldn't have thought it. Like, uh, Marion, how do you handle the frustration while bowling? Find it hard to stay focused when uh, Carrie goes away. Um, there are two different ways to to do this. One makes you less popular, which is you release some of the frustration. We've all been there. Um, but time and place, like every Tuesday night in league just kind of makes you seem like you're an asshole. You know, when yeah. you're bowling the round robin at the US Open and you're like close to the number and that thing and those things happen, people are more understanding of it. And that doesn't have to be the US Open, it could be any tournament. Mm-hmm. Um it says find it hard to stay focused when carry goes away. Um for me personally, it's um it, it's it's about having the moment of frustration, kind of taking a deep breath using the time to shoot the spare and then coming back, sitting down and like starting to add up all of the frames in your mind of, well, this happened and this happened and this happened. So that must mean I have to do this mm-hmm. and look at it more as like you're trying to solve the problem rather than, you know, the world hates you. Now the world may hate you. <laughs> Generally, there, there, there is a solution out there. So yeah. that that for me is the key. It's about like trying to, like focus in on I enjoy trying to solve the problem. And there are some days when it just pisses me off. But it's like maybe one day that I get super pissed off. And then there's nine days that I can like not like get frustrated by that and more want to solve the problem. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um <laughs> uh sorry I was reading one of the comments. Yeah, somebody who has a lot more frustration these days because my results aren't aren't what they used to be. Uh, I do find one of the ways to handle it is is to start at, and asking myself the questions, and it, it gets me away from the being results based and you know blah 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 or blame or or deflection of, and it gets you around to, to getting to a conclusion. Okay, why is it happening? How is it happening? You know, what can I do to fix it? And if I start asking myself questions, you start getting to being productive versus just emotional blah, which you might need to get rid of a little bit of it, but really no one else wants to see it. <laughs> okay. And uh, and to be honest, I don't even want to, be, I don't want to be there either for, for any real period of time. And uh, it's ironic. Chris and Simo are actually quite similar. Um, Chris gets way more frustrated at the local sweeper than he does at the tour stop. I do. And Simo gets way more frustrated at the $20,000 tournaments than he does at the $100,000 tournaments. It's just perspective. It's just like, it's just, yeah. Just interesting. Inside of the slide foot most of the time. If you're talking to right handers. <laughs> I was about to say, I've never really worried about that because I don't really give a shit. So, yeah. like, I've never really worried about where I was sliding. I'll be honest. Mm-hmm. I might look down every now and again to be like, man, is my footwork all over the place or what? Like, not yeah. finishing in the same spot. But I've never been at the point where I really cared whether I was sliding 35 or 37 because ultimately it doesn't really matter. It just matters that you slide in the same spot. Does that kind of make sense, Chris? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I think the guys on tour generally know how much they drift or don't drift. So wherever they start, if they start at 25, EJ knows, hey, I'm sliding 29. Yeah. No, no that, that's true. But I, but I also think that most guys are kind of like our approaches are what our approaches are. Mm-hmm. And it's like... I bet that there's a large portion of the players who bowl who actually don't know exactly where their ball's crossing the arrows either. I I would have thought that was one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard 10 years ago. But I think there's so many guys that throw it, that are way more worried about throwing it around the tracer, to the tracer, at the tracer. I mean, EJ's kind of the the, the ultimate 
I guess, example of that. He is great at throwing it at different portions, at different lengths of that same tracer even, and uh, and focuses on it a lot. And uh, the worry across the area is not as, as worried about as his, that's not where his barometer is. And I mean, if you're good enough to hit something 40 feet away that accurately versus 15 feet away, I mean, it's probably better information. I mean, I, cause, cause I mean, I would bet that Malot's the same. Like for me, it would be very difficult for me to tell you exactly where my ball hit the arrows because I'm looking at the dots. So when the ball goes over the arrows, like, it's hard for me to be able to readjust my eyes because I mean, the ball's on the line for what? 1.5 seconds or something. Yeah. So it get into some a spot of 20 feet. Like that's a third of the lane. So half a second from when you let go of it is where it gets to the arrows. But if you're not looking at the arrows, how the fuck are you ever going to see where it goes over? True. I mean, I, I just, I'm just yeah. putting it in perspective for, from my point of view. That's why I think a lot more guys, look at a, a more focused on where the ball is down lane because i think that's the way the games change because we're not playing as many straight angles and yeah. on top of that i think a lot of guys don't look at the arrows now when they bowl like seeing woody austin become more involved in bowling maybe with a legal dirt my driver's perfectly legal it's like 12 years old just I don't know. What's the problem? I, I don't know, but I'm on his side. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't even understand why it'd be illegal, but I'm on your side, Larry. Fuck Chris. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're probably, you'd probably win the vote on that platform right there. <laughs> Stupid president. Why? <laughs> Stupid president. Why? Fuck Chris. <laughs> Republican Democrats unite around a uh, write-in <laughs> candidate. <laughs> Um. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm going to run on the platform of don't be an asshole and fuck Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, to avoid swing being left in my head at the top. This goes back to what Stu was talking about earlier about push away, largely. Yeah, and uh, and secondarily, then it can be footwork if uh, if you you're having a step that's going maybe the wrong direction and you're walking past it, your swing. But oh. Um, 90% of the time, it's what Stu's talking about, about pushing it, pushing it straight. Yeah, don't push it. to the, for the, If you weren't on earlier, did mm -hmm. focus like you, you if you record from behind, dead behind your arm swing, if you see the ball, like, and your elbow is to the left of the ball, then that's where you've got to like kind of focus on thinking about, although you're not going to think about pushing on the inside a little bit, and that'll help you to keep it a little straighter. Yeah. David O'Sullivan, now here's a high-end guy that runs a lot of tournaments. Uh, line of scrimmage is visible for, on TV for football. We're not able to do something visual for the fancy educator, a version of a bunker or water hazard. I guess, in theory, Randy could draw it. We are overlaying the picture of the pattern. I and, like it. I, I think the pattern thing is very good now. And, and yeah, it doesn't change the, the oil like the other stuff does. Uh I think it's useful to kind of see what's going on as far as maybe like, like on that all-star show, the right lane obviously had a, had, had a water hazard to the right. Uh, it's interesting. How, you do have the strike track thing on the right, which will show yeah. kind of what the ideal line is, which is useful. I think a lot of people don't realize how far right their ball is at different spots on the lane. Uh when I see some shots, oh, that got to the right. I'm thinking it's a five, and it'll show up at two and a half on that deal. And it's a little further right than I think it is sometimes. But, uh, but it's, it's also very relative, that, because it's like, I imagine that that's the part of the ball that's touching the lane. But the ball's what, like seven boards wide? Well, the very bottom of it is, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's at least seven. It's more than that, actually, I think. But, uh, okay. yeah, it's not right. Yeah, seven boards. Yeah, it's just sort of eight quarters, eight. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, twenty-seven. No, it's the all the way around twenty-seven. So, yeah, whatever. All I'm saying is, is like, is the ball is quite wide, so your eyes can be kind of tricked by which part of the ball you're looking at. Yeah, um, 
if we're worried about which which part of your foot is sliding on which board, I think I can have this one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Tom Baker did win a regional at 69. Uh, Tom Baker's so good. He yeah, people he actually won three tournaments in a row back back in the well in the 70s now. He, he was also famous, the heyday of yeah, I mean he's just He's a very good single pin spare shooter as well. Yeah, when he went on the senior tour, he just he just won player of the year like four years in a row. Like yeah. he just dominated. He had a very uh he he was one of those guys. It's probably not it it'll probably happen again in a few years' time when somebody like Dom goes on or somebody like that, because there's like a little gap. Mm -hmm. but he had a thing where he was way older than all of the other people who were he was bowling against. Like yeah. he was still good, but he was older. So he went out on the senior tour, and there was like there was nobody who was really going out at the time. He went out. It felt like mm -hmm. he was just like, oh, well, this is easy, right? <laughs> like, yeah, Bob, you got it. Randall Chamblee, that was the guy I was thinking of that was oh, critical God, of the player without, that guy. yeah, without the uh, the pedigree that Johnny Miller and some of those guys had had before. Him. Uh, if Thelma was allowed. Uh, probably he didn't really ask for permission. He just did it, and no, he actually did. He did. No, he did. One hundred percent. Kirk gave it to him, um, and yeah. part of it was because Belmo is a registered trademark. I guess was part of it also. Mm -hmm. But I, I, this is one of the things that only people could care about Belmo doing it. Like, I don't care. Like, big deal. Oh, he doesn't have his name on his back. He's got. Who cares? Like it's ridiculous that like a guy who's won thirty one titles has to have his name on his back of his shirt anyway. Everybody knows who he is. Yeah, I, I have way less of an issue of of Belmo of Belmonte using his acknowledged nickname, which is literally just a couple letters off his name, versus some rookie that never has heard about it using a signature that is illegible. Like until you win enough times that we know your name. Maybe you should have it spelled out for a minute. Ron, Ronnie, Ronnie had a thing that nobody without a title should be able to have a signature on the back. Yeah, of the yeah, no, I, I agree. And, yeah. and what this kind of started with when I was with Brian Smith and and Blaze Bedoya was out there and and talented kid and another guy had a golf ball a mile, uh, but his signature was like it. It allegedly had a couple of B's in it, and I don't know what the rest of it was. It looked like a, you know, a rat's nest for the most part. I'm like. No one knows who you are, and that is I, – I don't know how they even catch what letters they are. That doesn't work. But yeah. So <clears> – <throat> You're welcome, Marion. Thank you. Thanks for being part of the show. Yeah, I guess we are at a minute. We're already an hour and 15 here. So uh... – <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah. They, that was the highest selling jersey. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Matt Smith. Uh, it, there's a lot of Matt Smiths. I'm not sure which one this is, but uh, this is the one I, I roomed with him once once upon a time. Aiming at, at boards 40 feet down the lane. Yeah, that's not for everybody, 100%. I mean, Dave Houston was one of the first guys to do it that, that I'm aware of, that, that I know personally. Too. And, he, and he was, well, yeah, yikes, <laughs> excellent at, uh, at being accurate and all that. <laughs> he was good at the bowling. He was good at the bowling, and – Man, talk about humble. A guy who couldn't have cared less. Went and didn't change him one bit. Can't even get him to talk about stories. Uh, is it legal? Dan, you're welcome to take it and test it however you want. Uh, but I thought the only way they can test drivers is cutting them open. Yeah, well, that's not going to happen. So, Because I'm not buying another one. We both know that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Imagine the epidemic of Stu Williams derangement syndrome in the U.S. if he became president. <laughs> uh, we definitely have free health care. Well, and uh, and uh, I'd run on a platform of insurance being um, becoming public or private, whichever way you look around it. But it wouldn't be it wouldn't be corporate. Yeah. Uh yeah. Yeah, 100%. We appreciate the the goodwill though. Yeah. 
Kevin, how about that I-35 traffic in Oklahoma? Yeah, I did make a post this last week. I was driving home, and for the 10th year in a row, Falls Valley has another project that gets you down to one lane for no reason. Well, whatever. It just it just never fails. I mean, nobody uses more government transportation money than Oklahoma and then drags it out for an interminable amount of time. You only have two highways. You have 40 and 35. Can we be done with it yet? Well, did you hear what uh, they, they, they said? Uh, it, when I first moved here, they, 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 uh, they've they been working on the 35 the whole way up. Yeah. So they finally finished Waco off. So then they moved the problem up to like Fort Worth. So now it's in Fort Worth. It's a disaster. Yeah. And somebody was uh, like, Elon Musk goes, ask me anything. And he goes, will you fix I-35? And he wrote back something like, some things are impossible. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sending things <laughs> to Mars and uh, and changing the whole face of, of car industry. But, yeah, I can't fix a highway. Yeah, I can't no. fix I-35. No, the fact they got Waco done faster than Paul's Valley probably tells you everything you need to know about Oklahoma yeah. right there. So I, I, the theory I'm was – giving him tried, credit for it. Donnie was trying to tell me they were trying to keep people in Oklahoma. And I said, well, it seems to be – that was that was the only thing that was – uh, they had to do that because the exodus of winds from the Sooner program is the only thing moving, you know, quicker than the traffic right now. And they're all coming down to Austin. <laughs> there you go. Oh, God, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Waco thing has been rough. Uh, keeping Texans out. Man, you can't. You don't need the IQ bump there. It, it's going to make a lot of people feel bad, and we can't have that. So, uh, it's the only thing that keeps Texas in America is OU sucking. So. There you go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Well, Thursday, come back and join us. We do uh, allegedly have a guest lined up. Slime so invited himself. Yeah. Well, and he's welcome to invite himself anytime he wants. So. Uh, uh him bill o'neill they're they're welcome to come on the show just just all you have to do is uh send a text you're in so uh darren tang maybe not uh his interview on tv is a book much like some of the ones we had on here uh well you know i guess they let some of them in i guess it, maybe you didn't move the iq enough how's that work <laughs> <laughs> It's weird because they beat you at both sports. Uh, <laughs> now, including football now. Congratulations on that. I, I was about I was about to say how 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 are you gonna are you gonna enjoy March Madness, Donnie? <laughs> Do they they televise? They didn't get in the, the NIT? They get an NIT bid. Don't know. Just just thought it was fun that they didn't get in. I mean, even North Texas got the NIT bid. So. Oh dear. Anyway, yeah. this is totally off the rails, and people are like leaving. In <laughs> yeah. So. Um, yeah, we're 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 bleeding, we're bleeding faster than Sooner football right now. Um, uh, I guess. Uh, well, yeah. Come back Thursday. If you're here, we're here. And uh, you know, with Simo, ask anything Thursday could could be another. Uh, you think? I don't even know. I don't even know. So, until then, hey, please support the sponsors. Support us. Look for some new ball videos coming out soon. We'll get the road thing put together and uh, and get it up soon. And uh, yeah, until then, please support the sponsors: Storm, Rotograph, Niner Global, Coolwick, Bowlers Mark, Fire Lake Bowling Center, Lightning Strikes, and Platinum Four. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. God bless. See you later, guys. Thank you.